Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Anger is a branch, and hate is a tree. And prejudice and bigotry are the undergrowth and the brambles. And they all form the forest, the unwholesome forest of intolerance. And so far, this is a forest that has always flourished. How well has it been protected and preserved over the centuries? Yes. And for how much longer? Hello, darling. Penelope. It's Penelope. Of course, it's Penelope. But... But you're dead. Who says so? It's... It, it's been in all the papers. Really? Aren't you the one who says believe half of what you see, a quarter of what you read, and nothing of what you hear? But I went to your funeral. Well, if it really was my funeral, then obviously I didn't stay put. Our mystery drama, The Man Who Couldn't Get Arrested, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Society endures, which is not to say it always will, but as of now, the work of the world goes on. Most people can be depended on to do their jobs. Most people accept their responsibilities. Most people obey the law. And why? Is it morality? Is it citizenship? What keeps most people on the straight and narrow? Our little drama may cast a ray of light on the subject. On the other hand, you may find yourself deeper in the dark than ever. It is night. Late at night. What do you want? Uh, madam, your sign says... Ring in the bell at this hour. Your sign says rooms for rent, and I thought... You that... know what time it is. Oh, I apologize for the lateness of the hour. I run a respectable place. I'm convinced of it, ma'am. I wouldn't have rung your bell, but I saw the light on in your well, window. Well, come on in, come on in. Do I have to catch my desk standing out here jabbering? Thank you. Well, you want a room? This one at the foot of the stairs. Bathrooms at the end of the hall. It's, uh, it, it's very nice. Yeah, well, so what do you want? A palace at eight. But for 25 a week? No, oh, take it or leave it. I'll take it. In advance. Oh, yes, of course. I'll, uh, write you a check. A check, huh? I'm accustomed to paying all my bills by check. Yeah, I'll bet you are. Listen, Buster, first thing in the morning, I'm at the bank. If this thing bounces, you bounce right out after it. And one thing I don't put up with here, women in the room... I run a quiet, respectable house. Oh, yes, sir, I approve. I'm I'm actually a rather quiet person myself. Mrs. Uh, uh, Mumford. Mrs. Mumford. Yes. And my name is Carnahan. Hector Fremont Carnahan. Well, bet it is. Where's your bags? Bags? Luggage, your belongings, your, your, your stuff. Oh. Are you on the lam? I beg your pardon? I ain't running a hideout. So if you're in wrong with the law, you... Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I assure you, it's nothing like that. Yeah? Well, what is it like? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm in Wall Street. Yeah, I miss America. No, 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 it's true. I'm a stockbroker. Yeah, sure, sure. You're also a millionaire. Yes. Even with the depressed state of some of my holdings, my net worth is in the... Yeah, no. yeah well, 
Hotel's Hotel, me, Buster. Uh, uh, my name is Hector. Yeah, so what are you doing in a flea bag like this? Oh, why, now, Mrs. Mumford, you underestimate the sheer uh, beauty of this building. Oh, yeah? This is what's known as a Madison brownstone. So what? Which means it's over 100 years old. You're telling me. The last of them were built in the 1870s. No, no, which answers my first question. Question. Where's your belongings? Oh, oh. Well, you see, I don't intend to live here on a permanent basis. You don't. You see, there are times when I need solitude, uh, intervals for meditation, contemplation, uh, self-communion, as it were. Yeah. And I do not wish to be disturbed by my associates. Well, then, why don't you go on up to the woods, millionaire like you? You're going to have one of them hunting lodges. That would not answer the purpose. You see, I must be available for various business decisions at a moment's notice. At this address, I am not more than five minutes from my office by taxi cab. And who would think to look for me here? Well, each his own, as they say. Good night. Yes, good night. Yes, good night, Mrs. Rumford. <laughs> what a perfectly horrid woman. Uh, but that doesn't matter. I must think. I must think clearly. Clearly. I, I must try to remember. What's... What's that? Who's that? I'm going to be killed. Who are you? I don't want to be killed. Who's speaking? Don't let me be killed. Who are you? Where are you? I don't want to die. Who is that talking? Who? I never did anything wrong. You're in this room. He, he's going to kill me. Why can't I see you? Stop him. Please stop him. He's going to kill me. Who are you? Where are you? What's going on in there? Open up. Who are you? Open up. Yes, 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 yes. Just a minute. Okay. Okay, now, what's happening? I, I, I don't know. Who's in this room with you? I, I guess nobody. What do you mean, you guess nobody? Well, well, I don't see anybody, do you? Well, if there ain't nobody in the room, who are you yelling at? I, I heard somebody. Who? It was a woman. I thought we laid down the ground rules here. No women in the room. She was in the room before I got here. Oh, you're crazy. I heard her voice. Are you nuts or something? We'd better call the police. The cops? What for? She was calling for help. Who was calling for help? The woman in the room. Well, you said there was no woman. I, I said I didn't see her, but I heard her. Heard her distinctly. She's begging for help. Somebody's going to murder her. And when was this? It, it, it was just now. Yeah? Or so why don't I hear her? Well, let's just be quiet and listen. I still don't hear her. But it was just as plain Are you as... sure you haven't been taking too much sauce? I tell you, I heard her. Her voice. She's pleading. She she doesn't want to be killed. She's she's begging for help. Oh, all right. Let's put a stop to this. Now, look. Is there anybody in this room? Any place that needs help? Now, is there... Speak up. Well, go ahead. Speak up. Let's hear from you. Well, you hear something, Mr. Hector Carnahan? I, uh... Yes or no? Well, I did just before. I mean right now. But, Mrs. Mumford, I distinctly oh, heard... Oh, Mr. Carnahan, I don't rent to drunks. Mrs. Mumford, I swear to you, I'm absolutely sober. Oh, well, then it's worse than a thought. You might bear in mind I don't rent to nuts either. Good night. But I heard it. I heard it. I heard a voice, a woman's voice. Oh, I must think clearly. Clearly. Please, somebody help me. I don't want to die. No, it isn't true. It's my imagination. It isn't true. I never heard anyone. I don't want to die. I have to think. Think. Help me. Who are you? Help me. I, I, I'm getting out of here.
What do you have? What? Oh, uh, 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 where am I? Where are you? <laughs> well, if you have to ask, you don't have any business being in here. This is Harry's bar, pal. Oh, uh, I'll have a drink. Uh, anything. You sure you can handle it? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Just, just fine. You're the doctor. Bartender. Yeah? Listen. Do what? Don't let him kill me. Who is she? Well, who is who? That woman. What woman? I don't want to die. Don't you hear that woman? What are you talking about, buddy? I'm going to be killed. That's what I'm talking about. Don't you hear her? Now, uh, listen, friend. Answer me. Don't you hear her? Friend, you better not have one. You don't hear a woman? Now, why don't you just go home? I don't want to die. Sleep it off. Don't you understand? We have to help her. Yeah, sure. Can we let a woman die? Oh, well, why don't you go home, huh? You don't believe me. Uh, you, you're trying to humor me. Now, look, mister. You think I'm a nut? Well, okay, read this. My card. Uh, now, look, why, why don't you just... Uh... Just read my card. Yeah. Hector Freeman Carnahan, okay. Read the rest of it. Go ahead. Carnahan, Dale, and Wallstein. Yeah. CD and W. One of the largest brokerage firms on the street. Yeah, sure, sure. You don't believe me? I believe you. I believe you, yeah. You can't treat Hector Fremont Carnahan as if he was some kind of nut who wandered in here. Now, look, all I'm saying, pal, is you better not have a drink. What are we going to do about her? Her? The lady who who is going to die if we don't help her. <laughs> look, friend, just take a walk, huh? You're going to let that woman die? Well, there's a lot of women in the world. One less. Is it really going to matter? All right, I'll go. But I hope you can live with yourself. The recent fall in the prices uh, of precious metals should not tempt the prudent investor into thinking he can get in on the ground floor. Hector, am I uh, interrupting anything? Oh, certainly not, Dale. I'm just doing my market letter. Oh. Uh, where were you last night? Hmm? Last night? Yes, you and Penelope were supposed to have dinner with us. Were we? Well, of course. Don't you remember? How would I know? Penelope handles all the social engagements. Check with her. Well, Eleanor did. Yes, and what did Penelope say? I don't know. She couldn't reach her. She's been trying to phone Penelope all day. Do you know where she is? Uh, probably at the garden club or the women's club. Well, that is strange. Where were you last night? Last night? Yes, you were supposed to be at our house, and when you didn't show up, we kept calling and calling. Well, as far as I can tell, we went out to dinner. If it was supposed to be at your house, then signals were crossed. Uh, let's see. Afterward, we went home. Uh, why? What's the matter? The matter? Well, you have a rather strange look on your face, Dale. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, I... Uh... Hector, there... there's a... Yeah. What is it? So there's a woman in my office. Yes? And she told me a rather unbelievable story. Yes, about what? About you. About me? Yes. Her name is Mumford. Mrs. Marguerite Mumford. Uh, you uh, know her? Marguerite Mumford. Uh, never heard of a woman in my life. Well, let me tell you what she said. We know what she said, so this is as good a time as any to take our usual intermission. At any rate, we have presented you with two Hector Fremont Carnahans. One, the impressionable and frightened man who hears voices. The other, the hard-headed, no-nonsense man of business. Which one is he, really? He could be either. Neither. Or both. Act two, very shortly. Voices in the night, voices in the starry stillness, voices that whisper secrets, voices that cannot be still, voices that laugh, sing, cry, voices that tell of love and joy, voices that speak of death. And Hector Fremont Carnahan is hearing voices. 
Or is he? Then I'll send her on her way. Just a minute. What's this all about? Well, I don't know. It's probably a confidence racket of some kind. Now, I insist, Dale. Explain it. Well, it beats me. Come into my office. Mrs. Mumford? Oh, well, good morning, Mr. Carnahan. Do you know me, madam? Well, well, sure. From where? Mr. Carnahan, you, you don't remember me? <laughs> How could I remember you if we never met? Oh, it's worse than I thought. Uh, madam, state your business. Well, I don't know where to begin. You you came around to my rooming house on Hudson Street late last night. <laughs> Whatever would I be doing on Hudson Street? Near the waterfront, especially late at night? Well, sir, that'd be your affair. You rented a room. Room? Whatever for? Well, I can only tell you what you said. You you, you said you needed it for uh, uh, intervals of uh, uh, meditation. Was it contemplation? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, I guess it was communion... I said that? Yes, sir. And you paid me one week's rent in advance, $25. You wrote me a check. And I took it to the bank this morning. And I asked, is it good? And they said, well, as good as gold. Let me see that. Look at this, Dale. Yes, it, uh, it appears to be your signature. Hacking. Exactly. It's a very clever forgery. I'd better destroy this at once. Well, you... It, it was not me. Uh, yes, sir. But I had to go along with the idea it was you. You, you, you see, you, you, you was acting very, oh, very strange. In what way? You were hearing voices. Voices? Yeah. A dame. Woman? Oh, what sort of woman? A woman who was calling for help. Why? Well, because someone was fixing to kill her. Who? Well, I don't know. I didn't hear her. You're the one who claimed you heard but her. But it wasn't me. Well, what do you want from me? Oh, 10 o'clock at night, a guy, he, he's the image of you. He rings my bell. He rents a room and gives me a check for a week in advance. And then he starts screaming to hear some dame who's in trouble. Well, I figure this guy's got to be sick. Well, I find out he's a big Wall Street businessman. I say, well, why don't I go to this guy's office? Oh, look, I ain't no angel of mercy. I had an angle. I, I figure maybe the guy's partners or somebody would slip me a couple of bills for my trouble. Well, 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 it's worth it, ain't it? You did the right thing, Mrs. Mumford. Oh. Yes, thank you. So, there's an imposter. Oh, I tell you, that guy is the spitting image of you. Just like you had a twin brother. Thank you for your trouble, Mrs. Mumford. And here's $25 that the man was supposed to have paid you and something for yourself. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, uh, well, goodbye, sir. Goodbye. So, someone's going around claiming to be you, Hector. What's the fellow after, do you suppose? I could see where someone might use my name to steal service at a luxury hotel, but <laughs> for a dive on the waterfront. Oh, excuse me, Hector. Yes? I'll put her on. Is that my wife? No, no, it's mine. Eleanor? Uh-huh. No, I, I just spoke to Hector. He doesn't know about the dinner date last night. Oh, he doesn't know where Penelope is either. Well, dear, I'm sure there's an explanation. Oh, well, all right. Uh, all right, Good goodbye. Oh, she's been trying to reach Penelope. Oh, I'm sure there's some explanation. We'll get it all sorted out when I see Penelope tonight. The recent fall in the prices of precious metals should not... Uh, no, 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 strike that. I've already said that. I've been saying it all day. Oh, I have to think. I have to think clearly. Clearly. It's 6.30. What's happened the time? Everyone's gone. I have to think. I'm slipping. I'm slipping again. Hector, dear. Penelope. Well, what is it? Why, well, you look as if you've seen a ghost. Is it you? Well, I'd like to know who else it would be. Oh, Penelope. I had a dream. Yes? A terrible dream. Oh, well, if it was a terrible dream, you'd better forget it. No, 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 no. I have to tell it to you. Well, whatever for? 
I shall tell you my bad dreams. That's because you never have any. Penelope, I look at you now, I see how beautiful you are. Oh, flattery, flattery. I love it. And how good you are. Well, about that. Listen. Listen and forgive me. Well, did you do something wrong? I I dreamed I did something wrong. Well, darling, you can't be held accountable for that. Well, I was jealous. Jealous? Of what? Of whom? Of Ben Walston. Ben Walston? Whatever for? Well, I thought... I, I thought you had fallen in love with him. With Ben Walston? And that you were having an affair with... Ben Walston. With Ben Walston? Oh, but that's impossible. Well, when you're jealous, anything's possible. Ben Walston. I was... I was so angry, I decided to kill both of you. Oh, you're kidding. I'm telling you the way it happened. But Hector, dear, I've only known you to become passionate over stocks and bonds. I don't show it, Penelope. But I love you very deeply. I know that, darling. And the fact that you and Ben were having an affair... That's only in your dreams. It became too much for me... You had made an excuse that you had to visit a friend somewhere out of town. But I knew that you and Ben were going up to the lake house together. And did we? Yes. And did you surprise us in flagrante delicto, as they say in the tabloid? No, not exactly. But you were both up at the house. And so I sneaked into the study where Ben was reading. Either he didn't see me or hear me. I got very close to him and I shot him. You heard the gun, and as you came into the room, I shot you. Oh, Hector, how could you? I, I told you I was insane. I was crazy with jealousy. All right, darling, I forgive you. Well, before I went up to the country, I was able to get into Ben's apartment. I wrote a note on his typewriter. <laughs> I'd love to read it. And as near as I can remember it, it was a suicide pact note. He was supposed to have written that I wouldn't give you a divorce. And so the two of you prefer death to being apart. Oh, you are a romantic, darling. Yes. Better to be together in death and separated in life. Darling, word of this must not get around Wall Street. I left you and Ben in the note in the summer house. And I came back to the city. Uh, incidentally, did you know we had a dinner day with the Dales? Oh, I knew I had forgotten something. I was in a daze. I went back to the apartment, but I couldn't stay. Well, too many memories of me, I suppose. It was dreadful. It was a voice. It sounded like yours, but I, I refused to recognize it. And the voice kept begging for help, imploring someone to save her, save her from death. Oh, how dramatic. I ran out of the house. I ran and ran down the deserted streets. The voice kept following me. I, I suddenly found myself in a neighborhood near the docks. I was frightened. I was exhausted. Well, this would have been a good time to wake up. Yes. I saw a sign on the tumble-down building. It said, rooms for rent. Well, any port in the storm. I went in there. Some slattern of a landlady rented me a dreadful little cubicle. But your voice followed me there, too. So I ran out. Oh, you poor darling. You knew a bar, but your voice wouldn't let me be. Finally, I woke up. I was home in bed, and I remembered. You were spending the night at your mother's. How is she? Oh, she sends you her love. The Dales will want to know why we didn't have dinner there last night. Oh, I wish I could come out with it and say they bore me. <laughs> Please don't. Well, I shall make up a most delicious excuse. Well, shall we go home to dinner? Oh, you go, darling. I, I have something, a uh, committee meeting tonight, and we're having dinner sent in. Oh, will you be home early? Oh, very early. Okay, then. I'll stay here while I finish this. Good. And then we'll both get home about the same time, and you won't have a chance to miss me. Hector... Dale, come in. Hector, I don't know if you're going to appreciate what Eleanor and I are doing, but friendship imposes certain obligations. Well, sit down. Frank? No, I... I think all this is better clear, cold, sober. It sounds grim. Well, last night you didn't show up. Yes. Well, Penelope didn't... Didn't what? Didn't remember? It's possible. You, uh... You know about Penelope and Ben Walston. Now, look, Dale... If not, you're the only one who doesn't. And that's what friends are for. I... I'm telling you. 
Why? Because a man who pretends not to see what's crystal clear to everyone else is laughed at as a fool. She went away with him last night. Yes, and if she did? You found out about it. It almost drove you mad. Is that so? That woman in your office today, she wasn't lying. There's no imposter. You roamed the streets like a lost soul. I went into all of the neighborhood bars, and most of them remember a nut. Yes, that, that's what you were to them. A um, nut who tried to convince everyone that he heard a woman's voice. Hector. It's my affair. No, it's Penelope and Ben's affair. Hector, would you take her back? Dale, there's something you should know. Eleanor is going up there now. Going where? To the lake house. She's going to try to convince Penelope to come back. She's driving up the country to ask Penelope to come back to me? Well, it's... It's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> She's going to have that long drive for nothing. You mean you know she won't come back? She's here. Here? Where? I spoke to her at the office around 6.30. Oh. Well, then uh, everything's all right? She's at a committee meeting. She's due home any minute. Oh. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, Eleanor and I have uh, egg on our faces. <laughs> there was never anything between Penelope and Ben. Well, it sure looked that way. Oh, you know Ben. He's like a stray cat. And Penelope has a heart that's big enough for all the world. Yes, well, Hector, we uh, <clears throat> we meant well. You, you must course. believe that. Yes. Will, um, will you have dinner with us tomorrow night? Have Eleanor check with Penelope in the morning. Yes, of course. Well, uh, good night, Hector. Good night, dear. Darling? Uh, what? Oh, no. I must have fallen asleep. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. The meeting ran a little later than we expected. Oh, that's okay. Oh, I just want to get into my nightgown. And... Oh, I'm sleepy, too. Oh, I'm glad you woke me. Oh, my glad. I... I had this dream. Oh, another one? It, it was about Ben. Oh, go back to sleep, dear. He was so terrible. I have to tell him about it. Well, I'm sure he doesn't care. To I must, it. I must, I must. I'll, but, I'll call him now. Darling, I'm sure he's asleep. All right, then you call him. Say, I have to tell him this dream. Tell him he must come over right away. To hear a dream? Yes, to hear a dream. Please, Penelope. <sighs> It's midnight, and we're dealing here with a dynamite dreamer. Now, before you put any of this down, remember, nobody really knows what a dream is. For all we know, the dream life may be the real one, and vice versa. Especially to those people who have learned how to develop the capacity to dream. What's this about a capacity to dream? Is there proof? such a thing exists? Well, is there proof it doesn't? In just a few moments, I'll prove to you that we have a third act. Mr. Hector Fremont Carnahan keeps weaving in and out of a dream world and in and out of the world that we hold to be reality. And so far, no one can really tell which is which. And that's par for the course, because who really knows what's what about anything these days? Now, what's this all about, Hector? Ben, we must make peace. Why are we at war? Yes, you and I are at war. Now, it's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Please, Ben, just listen to Hector. I felt so strongly, I was sure... Some of my emotion had to be communicated to you. Well, perhaps it was. I would dream violent dreams about it. Oh? Just this evening. I dreamed I was at your house, and I was waiting there to kill you. What for? Jealousy. Then he had the same dream about me. I just want you to know how I felt, Ben. Well, you have nothing to be jealous about, Hector. I think hatred cannot be concealed, especially when it's so all-consuming. The one who is hated must be able to sense it. Did you? Well, uh, will you forgive me? Well, certainly. That is, if you think 
Did I have anything to forgive? Ben, I killed you. In my dream, I killed you. But I want us to be friends, the three of us, the way we always were. Can we go back to that? Ah, Hector, I, I'm not aware that we ever left it. Oh, Ben. Ben, that's a load off my mind and a, a weight off my heart and a burden lifted from my soul. Oh, that's beautifully put, Hector. Beautiful. I couldn't have said it better myself. You're not supposed to talk like that, you old stockbroker, you. <laughs> Suddenly I feel tired. Oh, it's late. Very late. Well, uh, I, I'd better be running along. Good night, folks. Oh, don't bother. I'll let myself out. Good night, Ben. Yes, darling, I'm tired. But, but for the first time in ever so long, I'm pleasantly tired. Oh, that's good. Happily tired. The way you're supposed to be. Now, dearest, you just close your eyes. Yes. And get to sleep. Yes, I'll do that. Up, up and I'll be... Shh, darling. Get to sleep. You, uh, you would never leave me, would you? Oh, you're so silly. Why would I? Well, because I'm, I'm so dull. Oh, nonsense. I'm, I'm not an exciting person. Shh. I'm, I'm not a clever person. Now, dear, that's enough. Like, like Ben Walston. Like. And uh, what? Uh, uh, all right, all right, all right. For crying out loud, I hear you ringing. I'm coming. Uh, what kind of idiot would be at the door at this time? Who's that? Uh, it's me, Dale. Dale. Hector. Yes, me, Hector. Who did you expect? I... I have to talk to you. It's four o'clock in the morning, I Dale. I know that. Well, well, what is this thing you have to tell me at four o'clock in the morning to get with? Hector, I... I don't know how to say this, but... Yes, but what? Well, I... I never had occasion to tell something like this to anyone before. Something like what? Come on, come on, come on. Out with it, man. I just got a call from Eleanor. So? She's up in the country. And, well, I told you she'd gone up there to see if she could affect a reconciliation between you and Penelope. Didn't I tell the two of you you were dead wrong? Well, she'd already left our house by then. So she had the trip for nothing. She's up there now. And she found Penelope. How could she find Penelope up there? Uh, let me finish this, Hector. It's hard enough to say. Penelope's dead. <laughs> You're crazy. I wish I were. Let me prove it. Penelope's here. But I just spoke to Eleanor on the phone and she you went dreaming. Now, Hector, please get hold of yourself and listen. Come with me. Where? Into the bedroom. You'll see for yourself. What'll I see for myself? Penelope. She's here. She's been in bed all night. Hector, you have to stop fighting it. Well, will you please come on in? Come on, come on. You have to accept it. What are you waiting for? Just come this way. Dale, in here. But don't wake her up. <laughs> she hates it when somebody breaks up her sleep. There. See? See what? Penelope. Fast asleep in bed. Hector. There's no one in that bed. Dale. She was... She was here just a minute ago. Hector, sit down. Ringing the bell. You probably woke her up. Should I get you a drink or something? So she must have gotten out of bed for a minute. Penelope? Hector. Penelope. I know you're here. He isn't. But... But we were just in bed. Eleanor went up to the summer place. I don't care what Eleanor says. I know. She says she walked into the house. Deal. Deal. This is the strangest thing. The lights were on, and the first thing she saw... She saw Ben Walston. He was dead on the floor. Now I know you're crazy. Ben was here in this room around uh, midnight. How could he have been up to the summer house? You can imagine what a shock it was for Eleanor. She phoned the sheriff and then she passed out. Is this your idea of a joke? Don't fight it, Hector. Please. Sooner or later, you have to accept it. Penelope. Dead? Then why was I able to see her so clearly? To, to talk to her, though. Hold her in my arms. Is Penelope really dead? Get dressed, Hector. Where, where are we going? You know where we're going. 
We have to drive up to the country. Go. Cool. They're dead, both of them. Yes. I accept it. I accept it now. It's going to be very bad for you for a while, but this is the first step you have to take. Until you do this, you'll never recover. All right, dear. Let's go. I'm ready. Good evening, Mr. Carterhan. Hello, Charles. Uh, let me tell you what happened. We all knew they were carrying on, your missus and Ben Walston. I'm sorry I have to say that, Mr. Carterhan, but it's... Uh, Part of a police record, you understand? I understand. Well, I guess they could see no future. People in a setup like that, they can get awful depressed. I've seen it happen. Well, anyhow, they must have made a, a suicide pact. He shot her, and he then turned the gun on himself. We got the note. You, uh, you want to read the note? It isn't necessary. I know what it says. Well, anyhow, the things are open, and... What do you mean you know what it says? How could you possibly know what it says? I wrote it. Uh, Sheriff, uh, don't don't listen to him. He, he hasn't been right, and this thing is obvious. Uh, I, I understand, Mr. Dale. It's enough to disrupt anybody. I know what it says, and I know what happened, and you must listen to me. Sure, sure, Mr. Conahan. Just relax. Take it easy. Don't patronize me, Sheriff. I'm doing your work for you. Oh, yeah, I appreciate that, sir. And don't be sarcastic, I... Hector... The sheriff's only And you came out of it too, Dale. I'm not a fool. I knew what was happening behind my back. And it wasn't even behind my back. It was in front of my eyes. Hector, don't punish yourself. What does a man do in these things? It's all very well to say divorce her, get rid of her, kill her. But what if you love her? You understand? Uh, yes, sir. Um... Oh, we like to talk like two-fisted, red-blooded fighting men. But <laughs> that's propaganda we sell ourselves. Most of us go through life... Adjusting, don't we? Sure. And so you try to live with it. You settle for half a loaf. Because it's better than none. Understand? Yeah, I believe I... And I could even see her point of view because I'm dull and stodgy and boring. And she was... Well, she liked to get out. She loved the theater, concerts, lectures, everything that just meant nothing to me. You figure if the thing could be kept within decent limits, uh, I, I don't know how I mean that word decent. I, well, I believe I follow your true meaning. Yes, well, uh, uh, the more I closed my eyes, the more I pretended not to notice. The more, the more flagrant they became. Finally, I couldn't pretend anymore. I couldn't disregard it anymore. Yes, sir. I, I'm a stockbroker. I must maintain a certain amount of credibility. It was becoming a scandal. So I said to them, just plain cut it out. <laughs> you know what they did, both of them? They laughed at me. So I decided to kill them. No, Hector. I decided I would make it look like a lover's death pact. I knew they'd be up there. I wrote that note. I shot him in such a way that it would look like he killed himself. And then I shot her. I see. I didn't. I didn't want to be held for it, so I arranged it that way. But after I did it, and I saw them lying there, dead, a terrible feeling came over me. It was more than guilt, more than remorse. I, I, I wanted to take it back. Do you understand? Yes. I refused to accept the fact that I had done this monstrous thing. I, I insisted myself that they were still alive, and I heard her voice. It kept following me. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me, help. I don't want to die. The voice wouldn't let me alone. I I wanted to bring her back to life so badly. I forced myself to be able to see her again, alive. Penelope and Ben. I made them come alive for me. Sheriff, can't you see how ridiculous that is? Of course it's ridiculous. Well, the coroner is satisfied with murder and suicide. What do you mean the coroner is satisfied? Everybody is satisfied. But I'm telling the truth. I'm going to get you to a doctor. You need something that will let you sleep, Mr. Conahan. I can prove it. I wrote the note. It was typed on his own typewriter. We established that. Because I sneaked into his apartment. Yeah, and... Sure, sure. I fired those shots. He didn't. 
He couldn't. Look at his hands. Give them a paraffin test. It'll show he has no powder burns. When you fire a pistol, there have to be powder burns on your palm. <laughs> or in detective stories. Okay, okay. So he killed her. And then he killed himself. That's what you say. But I killed him first. Shouldn't the coroner's report show how he died before she did? How long did you say you waited between killings? At, uh, at least a minute or two. Hmm. We can't establish time of death with any accuracy within a quarter of an hour, maybe a half. All right. Here's the proof. Maybe uh, subconsciously I knew I wanted to get caught. He was found holding the pistol in his left hand, wasn't he? You're telling the story. I inserted the gun into his left hand. He's right-handed. That's a known fact. Everyone knows that, don't they, Dale? Ask Dale. He knows it. We all three played golf together, didn't we? All right, all right, even if it's true. The fact that a man is left-handed or right-handed don't mean a thing at a time like that. Killing yourself is an awkward thing to do. And so people do it awkwardly. You must listen to me. I've been listening. Now, this gentleman here is my witness. I've been listening. I tell you, I did it. I'm guilty. What you got is a guilty conscience. You believe you drove her to it. So you feel you're as guilty as if you'd pulled the trigger yourself. But I did. Twice. I'm guilty. Won't you believe I'm guilty? Well, do you believe it? No one else did. The louder he shouted, the more people smiled tolerantly. Then, of course, as happens in these affairs, people's patience wears a bit thin. And finally... The only way to handle the situation was to place Hector Fremont Carnahan in an institution where he insists to this day he is guilty. I shall return in just a few moments. It's one thing to hear people accused of murder insist on their innocence. It's quite another to hear people who are not even suspected insist on their guilt. Well, is he or isn't he? Did he or didn't he? We left enough clues in the story, but unfortunately, they could support either point of view. The only people who know for sure are Penelope and Ben. And how can they possibly tell us? Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Joan Shea, Bill Griffiths, and Cork Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now... A preview of our next tale. Remember a few years ago when I come home after my chores and you found me flat on the bed? Mm -hmm. I told you I was tired and my stomach was upset. I didn't want to worry you, Emma. It wasn't my stomach. You... You heard the voice, Rob? Yeah. <sighs> I didn't say nothing for fear people would say I was an old fool. But I heard the voice. Oh, Mother, please let me in. Please, Mother. That's what I heard. Oh, heaven have mercy on whoever it is. Amen. Who could it be? I don't know, Emma. That you couldn't pay me enough to walk past there after sunset. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.